In today's video, we will cover six powder foundations and see if they are as good as or better than any of my liquid or cream foundations. And do they look good on mature skin? Are you intrigued? Then let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. I have this piece of hair that's sticking to me. So the first powder foundation I ever remember purchasing was when I was in college and it was the Lancome Powder Foundation. In fact, we're going to talk about it today. I love the powder foundations because of the ease of application. And back then I really didn't need a whole lot of coverage. Even a pressed powder that had enough coverage was good enough for me. But my skin has changed and I have developed quite a bit of melasma, hyperpigmentation, and ironically trying to reduce the hyperpigmentation, I actually made it worse. So. I didn't think powder foundations would have enough coverage for what I am looking for now with my over 50 skin. But a trip down memory lane to the Lancome counter with a college girlfriend uh, had me trying the powder foundations again, and I ended up purchasing quite a few over the last few years, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So first, it's really important to prep your skin with powder foundation more so than any other type of foundation because the powders can stick to parts of your face that are too oily and also parts that are too dry. So you do want to exfoliate and you do want to moisturize really well. And sometimes I will even use a primer before I put on my powder foundations just to kind of fill out my pores a little bit more. And then there are quite a few brushes that I have here and I actually use a different brush for the different types of powder foundations that I have. And in this demonstration today, I'm going to use the same brush, but let me just talk to you a little bit about it. So the first brush is this real fluffy, dense brush. This has a lot of bristles. This is the Bare Minerals brush, and I do use it for the Bare Minerals or the loose mineral foundations. Now for palette foundations, I usually, I will either use this brush or I will just use a big powder brush. This isn't a giant powder brush, but this is a nice size powder brush and it does give me good coverage. And then if I'm looking for a little more coverage, then I will use a denser brush. Like this one is a, oh, this is Makeup by Mascara, which is now Saint Beauty, but I think It Cosmetics has a dual ended brush like this. So this is a foundation brush and it's good for cream foundations. And it's also really good, I think for the powder foundations because it's denser, so it picks up more pigment and is really good for buffing it out. Uh, you could also use a Kabuki brush. A lot of the powder foundations recommend using a Kabuki brush. This is the e.l.f. Kabuki brush. Oh, and I didn't say this was a Wayne, did I say this was a Wayne Goss uh, powder brush? Yeah, so this is the e.l.f. Kabuki brush and this one's really good for traveling and I can just use it with a compact and it does a really good job. But for today's video, I'm not using any of these. I don't know why I picked this brush, though it does work very well because I've actually never really applied my powder foundations with this brush until I was doing the filming for this video. And that is my Shiseido, it's a little Kabuki brush and the reason why I had picked it was because it has really short, dense bristles, a little bit more like this brush. Uh, but the way it's shaped, it's really good for buffing. And so I thought uh, some of the powder, the mineral foundations, which work better with a lot of buffing, uh, that I would usually use this brush, that this would be really good to buff uh, the foundation in. So anyway, this is the brush I am using on all the powder foundations today in my demonstrations. Now I do like medium coverage foundation. So I am looking for medium coverage when I am using my powder foundations. And of course, some of them don't have medium coverage. Some are light or light medium coverage. So then I will spot conceal first. And I did not do that in my demonstration, but a lot of times I will do that on my little darker areas on my skin. And I will use a concealer that dries down completely like the Lancome Tinted Doll Ultra Wear, their newest uh, 24 hour or all over all <laughs> concealer. I can't remember what exactly it's called. I'll put it in the links below. Uh, and then also the Flower Beauty has a light illusion concealer. Both of those work really well because they dry down so they're not going to cling to the powder when you put over them. So we're gonna start with the lightest coverage powder foundations or 
what I thought was the lightest cover powder foundations, but after I did my demo, I realized I did have them in a little bit in the wrong order. But I usually like the light color ones to wear over another foundation. Like if I'm wearing a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer, which really does not cover up any of my hyperpigmentation, I will put a powder foundation on over it and it just kind of smooths out everything and makes it look really good. Uh, the first one is going to be the Wonder 2 Go Beyond Foundation. And I use this one a lot as a powder, as a finishing powder. Uh, I don't use it over a full finish foundation, but if I've been wearing my makeup all day and then it's you know getting around 4 p.m. and I just want to freshen up, this one does great. Just apply it lightly with a brush right in the center. It just makes your makeup look freshly applied and it doesn't look cakey and it gets me through the rest of the day. So when I applied this foundation though, after I had both moisturized and primed my skin, I was actually surprised using a the dense brush, how much coverage it actually had. Because typically, I think they sent me a brush. They sent me this in the mail and it was the wrong color. So I went and I purchased this shade. So this one I did by myself, but I think they might've sent me a Kabuki brush. So I used their Kabuki brush, which was really big and fluffy. And it was just a very, very light coverage. So I never really tried to put this on as a light medium coverage foundation but I think it has beautiful coverage when your skin is correctly prepped. And this did last a long time. I've actually been wearing it a little more now as a foundation alone, as opposed to a topper foundation. And I really have been enjoying this. So go wonder too. It is something I have rediscovered during this video. The next light foundation is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation. This is a terrible color for me. And when I did my demo, I made the mistake of not tapping it out or not starting in the jawline. And I put a really big dark spot right in the center. I did find it hard to buff out. And so a lot of powder foundations, if you put a little bit too much on or you get like a dark blotchy spot, you can just kind of wipe off the excess on a towel and then kind of rebuff it out and redistribute the foundation. But this one I felt kept really dark in the center. Now I do have my darkest hyperpigmentation, you know, in that area that I put the foundation down. But as I was trying to buff it out and then trying to make it a little bit darker on the edge, I really just did not find the coverage I was looking for with this foundation. Again, it's not one that I would wear because the color is so bad, but I was not really overly impressed with the amount of coverage either. Okay, the next two I thought were going to be my medium coverage foundations or light medium coverage foundations. Uh, the first is the Lancome foundation. So when I first started using this again, I was using it with a puff and it had pretty good coverage, but when I looked closely, I could see it sitting on all my hairs. Oh, I forgot to say, prepping your skin. You should shave your face if you don't do so already with powder foundations. It makes the world of difference because you don't get foundation sitting on all those little baby hairs or that little peach fuzz. Uh, I do have a video, I'll put it up here on how I shave my face and the different tools from cheap razors at Amazon to a little bit higher end one for dermaplaning. Anyways, so I felt this one just really kind of sat on my face, but then when I was trying to use it and just buffing it into my skin, uh, after I had shaved my face, I found it was the one that made my face look the driest. I, I did feel like this kind of sucked out the moisture in my skin a little bit. Uh, the coverage was nice and sometimes I'll just use it pat on my nose, but overall I did not like using it around this area because I thought it just looked dry. So that was my experience now with Lancome, my former favorite from 30 something years ago. It's not really on my favorite list anymore. But one foundation that I newly discovered, it was actually hard for me to find because I guess it's kind of one of those trending foundations uh, on TikTok or was a few months ago. And that is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. This one has a lot of coverage. This had definite medium coverage. It really went on soft and smooth. Uh, it's really blendable. I love the feel of it. It is a very matte 
foundation though. So I did feel that my skin was almost too even. I, I didn't have any depth in it. Now you can change all that with contour, blush, all those other things. So this is a really good base if that's what you're looking for. I did think while I was filming the demonstrations that I wonder how it would work if I put on something like the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I guess Maybelline just came out with a four-in-one foundation that's supposed to be like the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I haven't tried it yet. But I was wondering if having that kind of glow filter primer beforehand, before you put on something matte like this, if it would shine through and give just a little bit of dimension. Again, this is really great coverage. It is an all-day coverage. So uh, if you're looking for a drugstore foundation, this one is definitely one to try if you can find it. I went to every drugstore, Walmart, Target around and they would have the lightest color and the darkest color and they wouldn't have any of the shades in the middle. And then I ordered it on Amazon and it came broken. And then I ordered it on walmart.com and finally got <laughs> the right shade. Uh, but it was definitely something I had to hunt for. Okay, now we're getting to my two fuller coverage foundations. These are the mineral foundations. And I don't know, it's just by nature being the mineral foundation and when you really buff it in, the mineral foundations are supposed to meld with your skin. They are the most skin-like of all the foundations. And so I really, really do love them. These are the ones that I typically wear uh, day to day. The first is the Laura Geller. And I just did a video last week on this. I'll put it up here. It is super skin-like. Now, when I did that video, I didn't have my correct shade, but I since on walmart.com ordered my correct shade in sand. This is a perfect shade for me. Like I had said before, because it is marbleized, it kind of can go just a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. Uh, it really blends in beautiful. It is a light medium coverage though. I tried to build it up several times, not in this demonstration, but uh, in, my last video, I, th I think I did up to three layers and it had pretty good coverage, but you still could see my hyperpigmentation through. So if you're looking for that flawless finish or flawless look, you definitely want to cover those darker spots before you start with the foundation. And the foundation goes over it beautifully. You can't tell that I had concealer covering spots on underneath. Uh, so it works really, really well. I've not tried concealer over this because after you do blend it in, I mean, it really doesn't look like you have powder on your skin. So I, I think you probably could actually use a little bit of concealer over it. This is the one I'm taking on vacation with me, with my family, because I don't need that flawless finish when I'm on vacation. I just want to look a little put together, uh, but not like I'm trying too hard. So this is the one that I'm going to take with me. It is gorgeous. And then the other mineral foundation is the Bare Minerals Original. I have it in three colors. I have it in medium beige, which was my winter color. And then I had it in warm tan number 22. Did I show you the back sides? Which is my, I just moved back from Florida and I have a lot of sun on my face color. <laughs> and then I have my tan 19, which is my tan has really faded and I need something else color. Now the tan 19 is a little bit cool for my skin. So I actually mix just a little bit of the warm tan in with this and into the lid and that's what I'm wearing today. So I feel like it's really good match for my skin. It had just a little bit of warmth but isn't as dark as that warm tan. And that's one thing I like about this mineral foundation is it is really easy to mix different shades if you need to get a combination. What I don't like is it's so messy. I have to put a black towel down before I start opening these up because I have white counters. And when you get the powder on your counter, you think you would just be able to wipe it away and blow it away or something and wipe off real quick. But you can't because as you start to wipe, it emulsifies and becomes almost like a liquid or cream foundation that you actually have to use a soap or a cleanser to get off on to get off your counter. So I have a bunch of black uh, hand towels and I use them obviously when I'm doing my makeup and everything. I have one laying on my desk right in front of me now and I also have one in my bathroom. So this product is gorgeous and it is full coverage. So I do not have any concealer on and it is, covers up my hyperpigmentation, not completely because some of the spots are just way too dark, but it gives me this nice, even flawless finish. This is the finish that I like 
when I'm filming YouTube videos. And so it is easy though to use too much of this foundation. So I'm going to demonstrate putting on too much and you can see it almost turns metallically. I think of like the Tin Man in Wizard of Oz, the silver uh, on their face. You get that kind of metallic-y undertone or, I, I don't, or overtone when you apply too much. So if you get to that point, you can actually wipe it off with a little soft towel. Uh, I just used this black towel in front of me uh, to wipe it down. And then without putting any more product on my brush, I managed to bring it out to a really lovely coverage. But it's best when you start just to use extremely light amounts and then build up as needed, but always putting on just the very smallest layer and buffing, buffing, buffing it in. I do find I have to buff the Bare Minerals the longest, so it does take me the longest of all the foundations to apply, but I do really love the finish. Oh, I did want to add that when I am done with the powder foundations, I do like to set them. I did not set them today with a setting spray uh, because I forgot. In fact, I'll do it right now. I love this one. This is... the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It is highly fragrant. Uh, I do not like the fragrance at all, but I really love the way this sets the foundation. And if while applying your powder foundation, you find that you, know, you just applied it a little too heavy and it might have a little bit of powdery residue, I usually just pat it with either a sponge or even my fingers just to kind of blend it in and then you spray with a setting spray and it looks really good but i do find that a setting spray will help your powder foundation last a lot longer so those are my best and not so best powder foundations i hope you found this video helpful if so please hit the like button and share this video with your friends i have some more videos that i think you might like here thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time